Yo, it's Coach. On today's video, I got the how to make a soul RNG game. This tutorial has been requested to me a lot. Someone originally requested this tutorial a month ago. I didn't know what it was. I should have listened. I should have learned my lesson with the first bla with the with blade ball. No, don't know if y'all know, but I only did the blade ball series because someone else because someone suggested it. So I'm doing soul RNG because people have been requesting it and stuff. Um, y'all already know the drill. Showed uh show a lot of love on the video and i will keep this series going and stuff that's it just show that leave a like let me in the comments if you enjoyed the video and then i will just keep uh, keep it going but yeah let's go ahead and get straight into it okay so soul rng not gonna lie after playing the game and doing some research on it so i you know i know exactly what i'm making i honestly don't know how the game is that popular I'm not trying to take anything away from the devs i'm just saying you literally sit in the game and just you know roll for random auras but anyway okay so let's get straight into it so first things first of course we need to let's see do i want to do ui or i guess let's no let's start off with something easy yeah let's let, yeah let's go let's type the folder okay first things first let's knock out some prerequisites then we'll get to ui scripting okay first things first i already know we're gonna need a remote event insert the remote event into replicated storage you want to rename this remote event to core event right then of course we're going to need auras right so i'm going to delete delete these um just go to the toolbox right you want to just get some auras so i just got these from the toolbox i literally just searched up auras and here we are right and then i'm going to show you guys how to take them stuff so now you guys can use your own auras you made or get them from the toolbox whichever one works for you right so here's what we're going to do so we are going to create a folder it's at a server storage of course you know hold all auras right so we're going to insert a folder into server storage rename it to aura folder then you're going to insert a folder into the aura folder now the name of this folder is going to be the name of the aura so of course let's say like the starting one or not the starting one the easy one to get is classic right so of course if you wanted to make a second one that was like i don't know rare then you would go here and you would you know do rare right now we're just i'm just gonna add stuff just for classic right so for classic we are going to want to insert some parts and the reason i say that is because it's these right so i'm going to use the light ore right i'm going to use the light ore as our classic ore but i'm just gonna, i'm gonna remove the light part because obviously like it looks way too cool with the light since this is the classic one i'm just gonna remove the light and just have the the lines so um i remember uh which one was it I forgot which part it was that the oh i think it was this yeah there we go so yeah so i'm just gonna take this okay right so if you're using now if you're using this pack i'll leave this in the description if you want to use this uh aura pack so i'm not gonna say i'm not gonna say for sure this will work for whatever model you're using and stuff because they may name their stuff differently and whatnot so yeah but it should generally work if you just you know follow the steps and understand what i'm doing or understand what you're doing okay so the way the person named it, shout out to Dusty Blue Skies, they're the one who made the auras and stuff. So, the way they made the auras, you know, they got the obvious effects, you know, obvious particle emitters. Then they also have these attachments, right, which is the white lines, which have the beams. So, they're all named bottom and top. So, these are what you need to get, as well as, of course, you know, the uh, particle emitters. Now, the issue is with um, attachments. Attachments, or is it particle emitters? I think it's attachments. Let me see. Wait. Yeah, it's attachments. So attachments can only be parented to a part, right? Or what was the other thing? A part or another attachment, right? So what that pretty much means is that we can't, like, you know, what I originally was going to do, I was just going to have, I was just going to insert a folder and then just name this, you know, like head and then go left arm, right arm. But no, we're going to insert parts, but the parts are really going to matter. This is just simply so that we can store them. So you're going to insert a part, right? um now this is going to differ depending on what type of game you're making like depending on the t like the character type if you're doing r15 you're going to have to make a lot of different parts you know you're going to need right hand left hand right upper arm left upper arm etc etc now i'm just going to do r6 which in my opinion is way simpler because you know they it doesn't have as much body parts right so for r6 first things first we're going to do head right you're going to want to grab all of the effects that I mentioned and stuff. All you want to grab all your effects, particle emitters, and the attachments. Now make sure you don't grab literally every attachment, right? Because obviously, as you guys can see, the hair and face, those obviously are not related to what we're doing. That's just the stuff that comes with, you know, the uh a Roblox character. So you want to drag them, right? Then what you want to do is um you want to rename all everything 
to affect. You want them all to have the same name. This is so that when a player has an aura and they try to put on a new aura, you can easily identify which effects and attachments are, you know, effects, and then you can just destroy them and then give them the new ones. Right now, we're not going to rename it simply because I just want to change the names for all of them at one time. So I'm going to insert another part, right? I'm going to insert another part. Then let me just duplicate this. Control D, Control D, Control D, Control D again. Right, and then I'm gonna go through all the parts. So left arm, the spacing is very important as there is a space between, you know, uh, with left arm. So then let's move on to the next body part. Left arm, we're gonna get bottom, top, right? Then our particle emitters, throw them into left arm. That simple, we're just, you know, we're just going through, just drag and drop, it's that simple. Then moving on to the next part, we have our left leg. This will complete the left side, right? So our left leg, bottom, top, particle emitters, boom. Drag them and throw them into the left leg, right? Then moving on, of course, we're gonna have our um, right arm. Then go to right arm, drag and drop, bottom, top, you know, particle emitters, boom, right arm. Then next we have right leg right open up right leg grab everything drag it drop it in right leg and then for the last part we have our torso right so let's rename this part to, to torso now the torso is going to have the most obviously right so for the torso from what i've gathered from going through all this what what we need we need the um what we need is actually i don't think i need this part i think i don't think i need that part what Mm. Yeah, yeah actually yeah i don't need that part because yeah I, I just realized what it's doing in the back so yeah so i don't need that right so i'm going to take you know the attachment bottom you know all the effects and the lights and everything right the specs the top and then that should be everything we need right just make sure you grab only the stuff you need right and then once you've done that drop it in, inside of torso and then boom just like that guys we are done we've set up our first ore right then you want to then you want to open them all up and then you want to select them you want to select all of their descendants so select all them right boom 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 you know it'll take a little second i recommend holding control holding control down and then uh clicking allows you to select all of them so you don't have to change them individually or do it like five different times you know hold them all down and then you're just going to rename them to effect boom so they all have the same name so you can just destroy all of them at one time so boom, then you can close it and just like that we've set up our we've officially set up our first aura and we are done setting up the aura folder, right? Now we can move on to our UI, right? So for our UI, we have pretty much we need to insert a screen GUI into starter GUI. We're gonna rename this to roll GUI. Um you want to disable reset on spawn. And then we're going to need three buttons to text labels. First things first, let's do the roll button. As that's you know our main thing. So I want to rename the you know the text button to of course roll button, right? And then uh, I want to keep I want to you know pretty much keep the same step. I'm so confused. What, what is going on? Oh, it's like what is going on anyway? So I'm trying to keep the same style as you know how it happened in the game. You guys know that what that should mean. So that would mean 0 0.5 transparency. Make the background black, and then our text would be white. That's really the theme we're going for here, right? So text color will be you know white. Um, scale the text, and then change the text to roll, right? And then of course rich text and bulk text, right? just like that and then i'm gonna drop it you know you know low down like in the middle right boom this is our roll button and just like that we've set up our roll button then we can duplicate this control d then drag this over here and then you're going to this is going to be our equip button so you know when we when we roll for an aura and then if we want to equip it we would press this button so equip button so this will be i remember if i remember correctly the background color was like a it was like a light blue if i remember correctly or was it like dark? I, I really don't remember. I guess it's just going dark. So we're just going to go with a dark blue. Then I'm going to duplicate this again. I'm going to drag this over here. 
And then as you can imagine, this will be the opposite, which is our skip button. Which if you press the skip button, the aura is saved to your player, but it's uh what's it called? But you're just you know you're not equipping it. Then of course, uh then of course we gotta change. We need to update the text on both, and I need to update the background color on this on the skip button. So skip button, background color, of course, will be red. We jump back over here to our equip button and we need to update the text to equip, right? Oh, it's nice well equip. Boom. And then let me just okay, I'm good. So we have our equip. Wait, is that? Okay, yeah, that, that, that is lined up. Okay, so we have our equip, skip, and roll button. Now we can set up our text labels. So let's go ahead and set up our first text label. Boom. Go ahead and rename this to roll header. This is just a simple header. This is what's going to be at the top of a player screen when they're spinning for stuff, right? So we have our roll header. Um, Like I said, you want to be in the top, top middle, bold, text scaled. Um, background transparency is going to be set to one, and then we just want uh, all white text. So boom, big bold text, and this is, we're going to just say you've found. And then da, 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 da. This is what's usually um you know at the top of the screen you know when you're rolling for something. So you found just at the top of the screen this is our roll header. Um, I think that's yeah, I think that's really good. And then duplicate this, boom, and then we're just going to put this in the middle. This is going to be like it's going to be in between. Right now, this is going to be our um, roll text label. This is what's actually going to, you know, show like, okay, here's the, here's what you got, right? So set the text to nothing by default. We don't want any text, right? And then for this, uh, we're going to need to disable literally everything except the roll button. We're going to enable everything else. We're going to enable everything else except, uh, I'm sorry, we're going to, yeah, we're going to enable everything, obviously, except the roll button via the uh, script. So let's just go find the visible, select all them, go find the visible button, and then just disable. So if you just want the roll button to be visible, right? And boom, just like that, guys, we have set up our UI, and then, yeah, we're, honestly, I feel, like, I feel like we're moving quick. We can now move on to the local script. So let me go ahead and open up Starter Player, insert a local script into Starter Player Scripts. I'm going to go ahead and name this core script and then in parentheses put local boom delete print hello world and let me zoom in first things first so let's get the tween service gonna say local ts is equal to game get service tween service i actually okay sorry i actually forgot something we need to do one thing so head on over to lighting right and then oh i didn't delete it oh well yeah uh i guess i'll just remake it so here so you want to insert a blur right it's going to be a blur or sorry not a blur sorry not a blur a um color correction effect and then you want to just rename it to blur right so you're gonna leave all this zero 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 by default you want it to be disabled you do not want it to be enabled so it's just gonna be a light gray now of course leave it enabled so you can you know see what it looks like the point is you want it to kind of darken the player screen but you still want them to be able to see right so yeah it's gonna be a blur we're gonna enable that whenever the player rolls and stuff so we're just gonna leave that side of lighting for now heading back over here we're gonna create a uh variable for our remote event so local core event is equal to game the replicated storage wait for child core event then let's create a variable for our local player let's say local player is equal to game dot players dot local player then let me create a variable for the role gui local role gui is equal to player dot player gui wait for child role gui now that you've created all of our variables let's get into the first function First, I'm gonna say roll gui. Dot. First, I'm gonna say roll gui. Dot. Roll button. Dot mouse button. One click. Connect function. Close parentheses. Enter. I'm gonna say core event. Fire server. In quotation marks. Roll. Right. Then I'm gonna say roll gui. Dot roll button. Dot visible is equal to false. Right. Because we don't want players to you know keep pressing the roll button as they're literally in progress of rolling. Right. Then I'm going to create a, a save position variable, right? So I'm going to say local save position. I probably will change how this works in the in part two, part three. But for right now, I'm just going to leave it like this because I was just, took me a minute to figure out something else. So I was just like, you know what? I'm just going to leave this as it works right now. So you're all you're doing is you're just going to simple simply save the position of the um the role text label. You just want to save that position. So just go there, copy and paste it, Control C, Control V, right? You just want to do that. But of course, we're going to you want to you know you want to delete this special bracket now we're going to throw this into a udm to new 
So boom, and then you just want to, you know, UDM to new, and then just uh, throw this, throw this in there. Boom and boom, right? That's our saved position, right? Because the reason for this is, as you guys know, in the game, when you press roll, it like every time it like you know goes through each uh, aura, it, you know, like it bounces up. No Diddy, no homo. Um, so we are then going to do core event dot on client events connect function in parentheses i'm going to say event type comma arg one sure for argument of one enter right then i'm going to say if event type is equal to quotation marks roll because obviously we want this to be handled on the server side because we don't want players to be able to you know just roll and roll and roll, roll you need the server side to verify that they're not you know currently rolling and stuff right so i'm gonna so i'm going to create a variable i'm going to say local aura is equal to arg one right and then we're going to set up a bunch of things to false and true. Or well, actually, no, this is everything that actually hit the true. So first things first, we're going to say game dot lighting dot blur. That's why we, remember we made this that enabled is equal to true. So that's going to be enabled. Then I'm going to say roll gui dot equip button dot visible is equal to true, right? Then same thing roll gui dot skip button dot visible is equal to true. Then roll gui dot roll header dot visible. If I can get it right, okay, is equal to true. Then roll GUI dot roll text label dot visible is equal to true. Right, then I'm gonna set up the roll tween. I'm gonna say local roll tween is equal to TS create roll GUI dot roll text label, comma tween info dot new. Gonna put the 0 0.5 seconds for the duration. Then I'm gonna say enum dot easing style dot elastic. Comma enum, but you guys can use whatever you know, easing direction, easing style, whatever you want. Then easing, easing direction is of course out. Then you can put a comma in between the parentheses. Special brackets. You're going to say position is equal to saved position plus udm2 dot new. In parentheses, you're going to put zero comma zero, right? And then you're going to say negative zero point zero five comma zero. Now you may have to adjust this depending on whatever the position of your button is. I just want to make it clear. Oh, oh, wait, oh, actually, sorry. Never mind, never mind, never mind, never mind, never mind. I just realized that everyone's position will actually be different since you all saved the yeah, never mind. You should be good. So, moving on, I'm going to say roll tween play. I'm going to play the first roll tween. Then I'm going to uh, say roll gy dot roll text label dot text is, of course, equal to, um, sorry, not aura, aura, right? I mean, even though both will work. Then we're going to set up a function. So once the first roll tween finishes, roll tween that completed, connect function, close parentheses, enter, copy and paste roll tween, control C, control V, throw a two at the end, roll tween two, roll tween two, right? And then you're going to leave everything the same, except you're just going to delete the plus UDM2 part. You're just setting it back to the same position. So, so it doesn't actually move. Like it's going to move, but it's going to, at the end, it's going to be set back to, to the position that it's, you know, it's original position. Then afterwards, I'm going to set up functions for the equip and the skip button. This is going to be very simple. We're just going to do some copy and pasting. Roll GUI. That equip button connect. Oh, sorry. That mouse button one click connect function close parentheses enter right. Then I'm going to say for event fire server in quotation marks equip aura. Then I'm also going to send over you know whatever the aura, whatever the aura name is or roll GUI dot roll text label dot text then i'm also going to um literally just disable everything so just control c all of this boom control c control v and then just add the roll button to this so roll gui or sorry roll gui dot roll button dot visible and this is going to be the only thing that's set to true everything else is going to be set to false so just control c control v control v control v control v that's why i said we're doing a lot of copying and pasting then i'm going to set up the, the next function which really we can just copy and paste this control c control v change the equip button to skip button you're going to delete the first line and then literally you're going to leave everything else <laughs> like everything else is literally the same Right, and then just like that, guys, we are done with the local script. I feel like we're, you know, honestly, just blow and do this. So yeah, then move on to the server script. Let me insert a server script into the server script service. Then I'm going to rename the script to core script in parentheses put server. I'm going to delete print hello world. 
right create three variables first is the roles data store you're going to say local roles data store is equal to game get service data store service then i'm going to say get data store in quotation marks role data store i just really thought that wrong sorry i just meant role data store not roles data store just role data store right so we're going to do that if you don't know how to enable data stores you need to also do game settings security um enables to do access to api services save publishes to be on the safe side and boom we're good to go right then i'm going to create a variable for the uh core event let's scroll up and save ourselves some time control c control v and for our last variable we're going to get the or folder which is inside of server storage so let's say local or uh folder is equal to game that server storage right for child or a folder boom now let's set up our first function for whenever the player joins the game let's say game that players that player added connect function right in parentheses but plr which is for the player who joined enter let's set up some folders and values so first things first setting up leader stats so as you guys know if you look to the top right you'll see leader stats you can see how many roles a player has so we're going to say is equal to instance dot new quotation marks folder comma parent to the player you're going to say leaders this is very important by the way leader stats that name is equal to just leader stats they need to be that exact name if you want to see it appear on the top right then we're going to add our roles i'm going to say roles is equal to instance dot new of course it'll be a number value which is parented to the leader stats folder roles dot name is equal to in quotation marks roles then roles dot value is by default of course equal to zero Right. I'm going to add data saving in part two, by the way, just in case people are wondering about that. Then I'm going to create a variable for our current aura. This is so that we can uh, keep track of whatever, you know, the, the player's current aura is. So we know if like they're changing an aura if they're just equipping one, they didn't already have one. So I'm going to, so I'm going to really just, let's copy and paste this here for some time. Let's do this twice, actually. So one, two, and then I'm going to rename this to current aura, right? Then I'm going to say control C, control V, control V. Control V again, and then obviously this is going to be changed to a string value, and by default it's going to be blank. So we're just going to have quotation marks. Then I have my second one. Uh, change this to classic or whatever the name of your first aura is, right? So Control C, Control V, Control V. Oh, sorry, Control V, Control V, and this obviously will be a bool value stuff. This is pretty much how you keep track of whether or not a player owns owns it or not, right? So we need to create one more folder, by the way. Copy and paste the leader stats folder. Control C, the right your current order value. Control V, and then you're going to rename this folder to owned aura. Owned auras, right? Control C, Control V, Control V. Boom. Parent to the player, and then parent this value. You want to parent this value. Oh yeah, I, forgot. I actually forgot to change the parenting. Parent classic. Sorry, parent classic to owned auras. Current current or to player. The only value in these appearance of leader stats is the roles, right? So boom. I can close out the UI, right? And then what I can do is I can move to create the folder. Oh by the way, uh these name match making sure the names match is very, very important. You see guys see how the name matches exactly, the name needs to match exactly. So yeah. Moving on, we're going to create a table, which is the aura chances. So local aura chances is equal to special brackets, enter. Here's how you're gonna set it up. You're gonna put the name of the aura. So first we have classic, right? Is equal to, then you're going to put the chance of, of a player getting it. It's gonna obviously, you know, be one out of whatever that is, right? So, so the higher, okay. So I'm gonna be completely honest. I'm gonna be completely honest. I understand the system as I made it, but I got help from ChatGPT to finalize it. So I'm pretty sure it, you know, it's, I'm pretty sure it's like the way it works is, like I know how it works, but like the understanding and stuff, the higher the number, the higher the chance got tested it. The higher the number, the higher the chance, um, the higher the chance you, the higher the chance the player can get it. Cause I was having trouble finalizing, uh, I was trying to automate the system instead of having it where you had to, you know, add an or each time be like, okay, this is that, this is that, here's the value, like adding multiple if statements instead of can just have like this where you just update a table, which is easier. So yeah. So then put a semicolon and then boom here here's how you just keep adding them right the lower the number the harder it is to obtain it right so you guys can use different values if you want rare and then i'm just for the last one which is epic so epic is the special brackets 25 colon now i'll probably add a second order to rare just so i can test to make sure that the removing and like the changing of orders you know you know saves and stuff so yeah let's actually do that i'm not gonna add i'm not gonna add one for epic but i will do something for rare right so let's just go ahead and add another value let's control c 
control V. This is going to be rare, right? So rare. Control C, control V, control V, control V. Boom. Right. So we have rare. And then we need to set up rare. But let's finish the scripting first, then move to that. And then I'll move to testing. Okay, then I'm gonna create a variable. I'm gonna say local total chance by default is equal to zero. But do lots of math, right? Not us, but the computer, I should say. So we're gonna say for i comma v in pairs, right? I'm gonna say or chances. Enter. Then you're gonna say total chance is plus equal to v. Then we're gonna set up the function, right? We're gonna say core event to dot server events connects function. In parentheses, you can put PLR, which is short for the player, comma, event type, comma, arg1, short for argument, argument number one, then enter. So for our first event, we have, of course, the role event. So first thing first, let's get the player's character. Character is equal to player.character, then set up the if statement. If event type is equal to quotation marks, role is name of our event, then enter. You're going to set up a for i loop. You're going to say for i is equal to one, comma, v, I mean, comma, five, one. Now you can have it as many times as you want, right? This is this is your starting value. This is your starting value. This is uh, what it's going to stop at, and this is what it's going to how much it's going to increase, just how much it'll change by, I should say, right? So if you wanted to like spin for a long time, change five to like ten or fifteen and stuff. But I found that five it works best for me. But anyway, so then I'm going to say enter, press enter. Then I'm going to create two values or two variables. I'm going to say first local random. Number is equal to math dot random one. No, sorry, math dot random one, comma total chance. Then create a variable and say local accumulated chance is equal to zero. Don't ask me about the math. I I I've tested it, read through it, and I'm just like, okay, I'm pretty sure I understand. Like I understand what everything is, but like exactly how it fully works, 99% understand. But that's just how things are sometimes. Then I'm going to create a second for our loop. I'm going to say for i two v two in pairs. I'm gonna say you need the or chances or chances folder again, and I'm gonna say enter. I'm gonna say accumulated chance is plus equal v2, right? Then I'm gonna set up if statement. I'm gonna say if random number if random number is less than equal to accumulated chance, then enter. I'm gonna say core event fire server. I'm sorry, fire client singular fire client. Uh, if I were to the player, comma, in quotation marks, name the event would be role, and then you want to send over the name of the aura. Then we're going to add in another if statement. We're going to say if i is equal to five, pretty much you want this to be whatever your value, whatever the value you have here is, like when it's on its final role. Then you're going to update it. You're going to say player.leader stats dot roles dot value is plus equal one. So they have an additional one as well as player dot owned aura special brackets i2 that value is equal to true so that the player now owns it right and then after this end i'm gonna throw in a break like i swear to god i wish i knew i swear i wish i knew about that stuff beforehand a break like that's that's so useful anyway so we're gonna skip two ends right after the break and then i'm gonna throw a wait this is so that like you know you can actually see it happen live instead of it just you know spin like by rolls already right so we're gonna wait like that then we have our second event we're almost done guys so if i press enter i'm gonna say else if event type is equal to in quotation marks quip aura last event don't worry guys y'all are almost there right now for my last event this is this is probably some of the most four i've used used in a while this is evolves like the use of like four or five or four i loops so first thing first let's create a variable for the aura so aura is equal to argument one, right? First up an if statement. I'm gonna say if player dot current aura dot value is nil equal to blank quotation marks, which if it's equal to blank quotation marks, that means the player does not have an aura equipped at the moment and stuff. So this means if it's not, so that means that means this will happen if the player has an aura on. We're gonna destroy it. This is why I said naming all the effects, naming all the effects effect is important. This is why. So I'm gonna say for i comma v and pairs. There's a character get children enter. Then I'm gonna say for i two v two in pairs. Then I'm gonna say v get children. So all of the body, so all of the body parts. And then I'm gonna say if v dot name is equal to effect. This is why I said it's important. You can name it whatever you want. But just make sure they all have the same name. Then you're gonna say v two destroy. So we can destroy all of the effects, right? So then oh sorry sorry i meant to say v2 i was just like, I was like huh anyway so v2 didn't name that effects and stuff right then you can close out the if statement we're done there 
Then I'm going to update the value. I'm going to say player dot current or since they're you know changing it, player current dot value is equal to or. Then time to add it. First for loop is for iv. We're going to say for iv in pairs. We say or a folder get children enter. Then we're going to say if v dot name. So if the or name is equal to you know whatever the or whatever the, you know the requested or is. Then I'm going to say for i two v two. In pairs, I'm say v get children. So I'm going to get the children. So I'm going to I'm simply just going to get the children of the uh. I'm going to get so once I've gotten the classic folder, say if I could classify, we've gotten the folder. Then I'm going to get the children, right? Which is uh you know head, left arm, and all that. Then I'm going to do the same thing for the character. That's what this is going to be for i three v three in pairs character get children, right? And enter and we'll say if v2 dot name so pretty much if this name that's why naming is important if v2 dot name is equal to v3 dot name right so you guys see how it's head and then my character will obviously have a head that's why the names are important v3 dot name enter right then I'm gonna set up a four i a uh, fourth four i let me say four i four v4 in pairs v2 get children enter this is simply so that you know you guys see how it has like we're, we're getting all the effects because it has multiple effects if it just had one then we could just parent it but they have but it has more than one most of them have like four or five four to five so yeah so once i've done that then i'm going to clone over the effects make sure you clone them over and don't move them over so effect clone is equal to v4 clone effect clone that parent is equal to v3 Boom, just, just like that guys we are done all i want to do now is just create i just want to um simply create an aura um i just want to create the rare aura just so i can test to make sure it works so i'm just simply going to i'm just going to duplicate the folder so i'm going to duplicate this and then i'm going to just rare right and then i'm just going to update it with i'll just take one of these or uh i guess i'll take the purple one so i'm going to just take the this, yeah, it's the dark aura. I don't want all the swirls and stuff. Um, but I don't. You know what? Actually, I I don't even care. It doesn't even matter. So yeah. So just like just like we did the first time, you can take everything. And yeah, like my whole point is, guys. With oh, that must be what it is. This must be what's controlling all this stuff. Oh no, that's not it. Wait, what is it? I'm confused. Nothing changed. Well, anyway, so that's why i said to you guys that it's very important that in my opinion you do um oh i completely forgot okay hold on i completely forgot to clear all these out so let me clear all of let me clear all of these out first and foremost and then i'm going to replace their effects but yeah that's why i said honestly in my opinion i feel like you guys should all do um r6 instead of r15 and stuff i mean i guess with r15 you could have more like the effects could be placed more precisely and stuff like you know on people's hands and whatnot but i just feel like it's just it's a lot less work if you just um if you just do uh what's it called i think if you just do r6 instead of r15 because it's just there's so many body parts with r15 so yeah so i'm just gonna move everything over we have a left arm this oh wow this actually seems like it's a lot less than the other one which is great then the left leg, saving ourselves a whole bunch of time. It's really just a drag and drop game at this point. And drag this is what is this the right arm? So okay, so the arm is a really big thing for the effects. So right arm. Then there's the right leg. And then to the torso must have most of the effects then. So bottom bottom, energy flame, lighting, like stars, uh yeah, top top. Um, let me delete that. Okay, I, and I just realized I deselected everything. I might be an idiot. Okay, so let me grab. Let me select everything again. Boom! Drag all of this over to torso. Okay, everything is gone except for the hands. There's like a huh. waist, right collar. Huh? Did I leave them on like the arms? Oh, is it in? Oh, I see. Oh, it's inside. Oh. I think they parented, yeah, I think they parented this, though, because I'm pretty sure grip attachments or grip attachments are, yeah. So I'm like, eh. Yeah, I'm kind of like, I don't know, honestly. I don't really think I need it. So I'm going to just delete the effects here, just so I, you know. But yeah, so I'm just leaving it. Um, so yeah, we have all of our effects 
Now all I gotta do simply, so here's how you would just go about adding, you know, new effects whenever you, I mean, new auras, right? Or if you just wanted to update the effects as well. So when you add new auras, just rename it to, rename them to effect. Effect, and boom, we are done. All right, let's go ahead and test to make sure this works. As always, if you guys want access to any one of my scripts or models, you guys can become either a channel member or a Discord subscriber. Link to either one of those options can be found in the description. Definitely highly recommend you guys do that. Okay, so as you guys can see, we have my we have our roll stats in the top right. We have all you know owned aura and whatnot. Okay, so let's go ahead and roll. Boom. You guys see it's jumping. You guys see it, it was jumping through them and stuff. And then now I have the option to equip or skip, and the roll button has disappeared. So I've gotten classic. If I equip classic, boom. I equipped classic. The um the rest of the UI disappeared. Roll button came back. The value is now uh, checked true for it. I have the aura, my roll, the roll went up plus one. Right then, now let's try rolling for for rare. Right, epic is not a. Oh, okay, that actually makes sense since I actually uh deleted. I didn't create a photo for that. So yeah, so now I'm just gonna try to roll for uh rare until I get it. There we go. So if I equip rare, boom. Okay, there we go. It works. So boom, it replaced that other aura, and yeah, there you go. That is how you make a soul RNG game. That's stuff random number gender or whatever it stands for. Right stuff i will definitely continue this series it's i mean it's very very easy you know very easy to make very simple game and stuff to show the video lots of love and i definitely got to show it a part three if you got any suggestions any if you find any issues anything that doesn't work any consistencies with inconsistencies with the system let me know in the comments dm me whatever and i will address it in part two i'll keep the series going show the video lots of love if you enjoyed the video definitely leave a like and subscribe and i will see you guys in the next video i appreciate you guys for watching